Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Introduction to the Psychology of Bilingualism and Multilingualism. I am Dr. Ark Verma from the Department of Cognitive Sciences at IIT Kanpur. This is the second week of the course and we are sort of moving to the second lecture. Now you might remember that in the previous lecture we were talking about categorical perception and the ability to perceive phonemic contrasts across uh, different languages and also in the native language. We said that this is very, very fundamental to the infant's ability to perceive speech and acquire language eventually. In the current lecture, we will begin with discussing the consequences of the same for infants uh, who are bilingual, uh, either in a sequential bilingual sense, for example, uh, they are learning their first language and then after some time the second language comes in, or in a simultaneous bilingual setting where they are exposed to both their languages starting from the birth itself. Let us go ahead. Now, if a bilingual child is introduced to the sounds of a second language at a slightly later age, the ability to perceive phonemic contrasts is already on the vein. It is shifting from more of a language general to a language specific ability uh, with more focus on the contrast of what it considers the native language. So basically what will happen is that perceiving the phonemic contrasts of uh, you know the second language or the third will become as much more difficult the further uh, you know you take this uh, introduction of the second or third language. So children have sort of uh, you know uh, we know with increasing age are becoming generally less sensitive to the non-native phonemic contrast including contrast that may be meaningful for the second language. So basically it presents a sort of a challenge uh, you know given how the organization of phonemic perception is happening with, uh, within the children and therefore it will become a bit harder for them to acquire the sounds of the second language the further it happens from the first language. Let us let us go ahead with that. Now, if children have to in order for them to learn the sounds of the second language, uh, you know uh, or say basically uh, you know they have it, it is it becomes part of their ability to perceive non-native contrast will need to be restored. If they have to acquire uh, these phonemic contrasts from the second or the third language, basically what we will need is we will need a little bit of a reversal of this you know decline uh, of uh, you know language general phonemic contrast uh, you know perceiving ability. And in this instance, De Groot, for example, takes the you know De Groot, uh, takes the example of a Japanese-born child at 12 months of age who could no longer perceive the difference between the l and r sounds, which are instances of the same phoneme in Japanese, but uh, basically are uh, treated as separate categories in English. So obviously, the later the onset of uh, you know second language learning uh, will be, it will be that much more difficult for these children uh, to acquire the sounds of a given second or a third language. Now, Cole and colleagues basically examine these conditions, which could lead to the reversal of this ability to perceive non uh, phone, you know non-native phonemic contrasts. So what they did was in 12 laboratory sessions of around 25 minutes across spread across 4 weeks, they exposed a group of 9 and 10 month old American infants from only English speaking families to Mandarin Chinese. During these sessions, 4 different Mandarin Chinese speakers read children's books to the infants and they played games with them, exposing them to around 25,000 syllables from Mandarin Chinese. Whereas for a control group, the similar sessions were conducted but by speakers of English. So here you are saying basically is that you are, uh, while not explicitly teaching uh, language to children, you are basically exposing them to the sounds of a different language. These are children who are from only English speaking American families, but what is happening is that during play, during their interaction, they are getting exposed to more than 25,000 syllables which are part of Mandarin Chinese. Now post training this ability to perceive uh, you know uh, contrast in Mandarin Chinese for the two groups was tested using the head turn paradigm. I hope you remember what the head turn paradigm is about. If not please go and refer to lecture 5 from the first week. Now as experimental stimuli 
during test, two computer synthesized speech sounds were chosen so that they were contrastive in Mandarin Chinese but not in English. All right. Now, the results, what did the results show? The results actually showed that infants who were exposed to this interactive sessions of Mandarin Chinese across, uh, you know, the 12, uh, across the uh, 12 laboratory sessions of 25 minutes each were able to actually perceive the contrast in Mandarin Chinese almost as well as native Chinese infants. So, you can see here that this is still a very plastic ability. It is still and because we are talking about these very young infants, it is still an ability that can be restored. The ability to, uh, to perceive non-native phonemic contrast can still be restored through practice and instruction and interactive games and so on. Now, if you look at these findings from a distance, these findings actually provide support to the notion that the decline in this ability to perceive non-native contrast can obviously be reversed through, uh, you know, systematic exposure to that language. So, it is not like if something is lost, at least at this very early age, it is lost permanently. Now, in another similar experiment, which exposed children to audiovisual material or just the audio material, actually it was found that the same effect did not happen. So, the same reversal of this ability of, uh, you know, perceiving, non, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, the reversal of this uh, inability of perceiving non-native uh, phonemic contrast could not be achieved when the interactive sessions were replaced by audio material, let us say just sounds uh, on a recorder were played or even audio visual material where videos of Chinese speakers were played. So, this is also something very, very interesting that, you know, we need to keep in mind that when we are imparting language lessons to children or let us say when children are themselves acquiring language, they do so much better in an interactive true to life kind of scenario rather than picking up language from uh, only, uh, you know, audios or only videos. Now, let us look at how this might play out in bilinguals, okay. And there can be a few questions we can ask about this. For example, what would happen in the case of infants who are exposed to a bilingual environment from birth? What would be considered as the native language? Which contrast the infants will prioritize with the perspective of learning? Now, imagine say for example, uh, you know in case of simultaneous bilingual uh, and I, as I keep giving the example, suppose a child is born to parents who speak let us say English and French, you know one parent speaks English, the other parent speaks French and uh, the language environment at home would be constantly, uh, you know, uh, of both these languages together, okay. Now, what would happen in that case? What is the native language here? Which phonemic system will the child prioritize over the other one? Uh, and how will they actually learn? Will there be an order of learning here as, as what happens in the non-native, as uh, what happens in the sequential uh, bilingualism, uh, you know, system? So, researchers who were trying to look at these questions focused more on the role of the statistical distribution of the information available to the infants from the two or more languages that are available to them. So, the idea is that these infants are probably paying attention to the statistical properties of the language input and remember the language input is mixed, there are both languages which are coming in. So, what the infants are probably doing here is they are paying attention to patterns of, uh, you know, speech sounds in uh, when they are being spoken to in English or when they are being spoken to in uh, French or Chinese or whichever the second language is. Now, uh, for instance, my and colleagues, uh, you know, in 2006, in a study with six and eight month old infants actually demonstrated that infants were able to exploit the statistical distribution and uh, stat statistical distribution and information or speech sounds from the language input to build these different phonetic categories. More specifically, what they did was that they exposed these infants to either a bimodal distribution, say for example, wherein two types of phonetic categories were, uh, you know, equally frequently presented or a unimodal, uh, you know, distribution system wherein, say for example, only one type of phoneme category was presented again and again. And what did they find? They actually find that infants in the former condition were able to develop two distinct phonetic categories, whereas infants in the latter condition, where they were presented only with a unimodal distribution, were keep, uh, were able to dis, uh, you know develop only one prominent category. So this sort of tells us that language input actually plays a very very important role when you're talking about how are infants picking up language from their environment, the nature of language input, the regularities in the language input, 
although uh, you know uh, in the previous lecture we were talking about that categorical perception is innate and this is something that we are born with you can see here uh, you know this is a very uh, solid example of the fact that although the basic abilities might be innate the input actually plays a very very important role the statistical properties of the input plays a very very important role in how the child and to what extent and to you know what will be the nature of uh, how children will pick up language from their environment let's go further now infants who are raised in a simultaneous bilingual environment are actually exposed to two speech sound systems at the same time now these sound systems may either be very similar to each other or they may differ from each other in a number of different ways say for example in the carving out of phonemic categories based on uh, you know voice onset time values or maybe rhythm or maybe some other things so in that respect you know my uh, uh, colleagues demonstration that infants are sensitive to statistical distribution of speech sounds from the input may serve as a mechanism you know it, it may be a candidate mechanism for acquiring speech sounds uh, uh, you know basically in a way that you know that that becomes the fundamental uh, source of information for children but in case of simultaneous bilinguals we can ask this question that okay how are uh, you know how are children actually doing this which speech which regularities in their input they are actually paying attention to are they sort of doing something like they are paying more attention to first english and then their uh, then uh, french or let's say first their l1 and then their l2 or in which order and how are they actually extracting this information because uh, obviously the input is mixed the statistical patterns are probably too many to decipher from so given that you know the linguistic environment of uh, these simultaneous bilinguals is considerably more complex than of monolinguals or even sequential bilinguals because in sequential bilinguals also uh, you're exposed to the first language first and uh, you know you might be learning uh, aspects of the first language the second language only comes later in simultaneous bilinguals you are having input from both languages at the same time starting from birth and it becomes that much more difficult for people to sort of you know or for these infants to may maybe acquire these categories from the two languages simultaneously are these competing sound systems or are they you know very similar sound systems both will have their own challenges so uh, using the head turn procedure bosch and sebastian gall uh, actually looked at the development of vowel contrasts in catalan spanish infants uh, for two groups of 4 and 8 month olds so when i'm saying catalan spanish infants we are talking about infants who uh, you know who are speaking uh, whose environment consists of both catalan and spanish input and uh, you will see that the choice of age groups is also interesting because remember uh, prior to 6.5 months the ability is more language general so for one group of inf infants which is the four month old infants it is still that more language general and for the other group of infants which is after 7.5 months which is around eight months old it is gradually moving towards more language specific uh, capabilities so uh, as a control group now as a control group four and six month old spanish and catalan monolingual children were also tested and uh, the idea was to be able to compare their developmental pace and trajectory uh, with these uh, infants which are four and eight month olds of you know catalan spanish uh, bilingual infants so technically what we have here in this experiment just to sort of recount is that we have six groups we have uh, catalan spanish bilinguals four months and eight months so two groups here we have four months spanish monolinguals uh, and six months spanish monolinguals and we have four month catalan monolinguals and six month catalan monolinguals so in all what we have is we have six groups of infants which are being uh, sort of uh, you know uh, compared with each other uh, at each age group now the vowel contrast that the experimenters chose to study was the contrast between a uh, as in bait and a as in bet now this is this vowel pair is contrastive in catalan uh, so in catalan uh, bet a sound or bet a sound is actually different phonemic categories but not really in spanish in spanish they basically instantiate the same vowel category and is not really distinguished so for example for spanish adults uh, these two will be the same sounds whereas for catalan adults these two will be slightly different sounds <laughs> 
and infants were basically what we are, how they were testing is that infants were exposed to different instances of these two sounds embedded in disyllabic non-words and why are they using non-words uh, because A they are uh, you know uh, uh, sort of, they don't have any other familiarity, uh, clue of familiarity do, to these children. And uh, they were basically disyllabic non words and they were uh, embedded in words and not produced in an isolated fashion so that things are slightly closer to how these phonemes are actually encountered in natural speech. More specifically, what they did was that during the familiarization, half of the infants in each age group were presented with A as in bait. Uh, and half of them were presented with a as in bet whereas in the test trials they were presented with either the same one that were presented in the test uh, in the familiarization phase or a different sound uh, to that was presented in the familiarization phase so the discrimination they have to make again remember the head term procedure is being used if i am correct yeah head term procedure is being used they are basically asking them to make these discriminations and what we are sort of going to see is whether the Catalan Spanish bilinguals make this discrimination well or whether the Catalan monolinguals obviously should be able to make this discri discrimination, Spanish monolinguals might not be able to make this discrimination. So, we have these three predictions. Okay. Uh, but around 4 months of age, the authors predicted that for at least 4 months of age, all the three groups will be able to perceive this phonemic contrast because you know there is this uh, ability there is this language general ability of perceiving phonemic contrast that is there up till 4 for 5 months of age however uh, spanish infants at 8 months of age might have lost this ability might have lost this generic ability of making these phonemic contrast so technically they should not be expected to be able to make this difference okay so by this time they would have lost the ability to perceive these catalan specific contrasts since these are not relevant to spanish uh, interestingly, uh, if you look at the possibility for bilingual these for these simultaneous bilingual kids, if only continued exposure to both languages is important, uh, they should have developed distinct categories for A, uh, you know, as in bait and E as in uh, bet, uh, and should be able to perceive the contrast. So let us see. Alternatively, it, it could also be possible that due to the distributional overlap between the cattle in A and uh, you know in bait versus uh, A as in bet the, and the acoustic inter, acoustically intermediate category that happens in Spanish, they could fuse everything together and just come up with a single phonemic category. Let us see what the results tell us. The results actually showed that for all the three groups of four month olds, they were able to perceive the phonemic contrast in A versus A, bait versus bet, uh, which as uh, you know we were uh, reasoning is perfectly plausible also 8 month old catalan but not 8 month old spanish people could perceive the contrast uh, which is also uh, you know perfectly plausible because we know that 8 month old spanish monolingual infants uh, uh, you know would not be able to do this because they are sort of moving more towards the language specific uh, phonemic contrast than the language general phonemic contrast the interesting part of results was found with bilingual infants you know the results were interesting because they seem to have lost the ability to perceive this phonemic contrast and they behaved much like the spanish monolinguals of the same age how is this happening why is this happening will the ability be restored again why are they not being able to perceive the phonemic contrast that are specific to catalan because they are also catalan spanish bilinguals uh, eventually by when would this be restored if at all so, to answer this question, uh, they you know tested another group of slightly older 12 month old Catalan Spanish uh, simultaneous bilingual infants and actually found that the ability to perceive phonemic contrast in Catalan were restored by this age. So, what we are seeing here is for simultaneous bilinguals, this ability of being able to perceive the contrast in uh, you know given language uh, may be slightly delayed. You know, it, it may take some time for the system to, you know, pick up the contrast of one language and uh, then pick up the contrast of the other language and then sort of, uh, you know, reach some kind of a reconciliation where they are able to keep these two categories separate. What might have happened, and again I am speculating, what might have happened in this earlier age is that they might have sort of, uh, you know, uh, fused these categories together and it is because it is not relevant in Spanish, uh, they are not being able to make these differences. But as they grow older, as they move towards the capability of developing language specific contrast in Catalan and language specific contrast in Spanish, 
they get back this ability to make these uh, you know distinction between the bait and the bet a sound. This is something very similar to the author's uh, conclusion. So, they said that due to the simultaneous exposure to both languages, Catalan and Spanish, these infants may have uh, initially developed a single phonemic category of these A sounds and uh, you know as in bait and bet and hence uh, initially they failed to distinguish between them. However, gradually as the ability to perceive these contrasts uh, you know becomes better, uh, they become better in processing language specific input, uh, they get this ability back albeit with a delay of a few months. So, uh, you know interesting because it sort of tells us that how is this mixing of two languages since birth is impacting the development of phonemic perception in these children. Similar demonstrations were also documented in later studies by Bosch and Gauls uh, in 2003 and 2005 and based on these findings it could then be concluded that cross language distribution overlap indeed delays slightly the building of language specific contrastive categories in simultaneous bilinguals. It does not uh, impact it in a sense that they do not have that ability, it just delays it basically uh, you know you can say that the system is buying time for itself to acquire the language specific uh, you know uh, you know uh, phonemic contrast for both of their known languages. Now an additional interesting proposal was made by Sundara and colleagues in 2008 who proposed that infants are not only sensitive to just the distributional characteristics of the speech sound but also to the frequency with which these speech sounds occur in these respective languages. And uh, how will they test their hypothesis? So, what they did was they compared the speech perception ability of monolingual French, English and bilingual French English infants and they basically compared them on their ability to distinguish between the French the and the English the. Now, in French the sound is the, uh, you know do something or something like that and whereas in English it is the very uh, specific the. You can also see that in French the the is basically pronounced by uh, you know keeping the tongue just at the back of the teeth whereas the English the is pronounced by keeping the tongue in the alveolar ridge you know in the palatal. So uh, while the French and English the sounds or the the sounds are differently produced you know the place of articulation is different uh, and this difference can be phonemic in some, some languages but interestingly what happens in English is that these two sounds instantiate the same phonemic category. So technically while you are saying the the or the the it is actually instantiating the same phonemic category irrespective of whether it is English or whether it is Dutch because there is a lot of overlap. Still when you test English adults are able to distinguish between the French the and the English the, but French adults are not capable of distinguishing between these two. So these, given that these two versions also, given that these two versions are very frequent in French and English respectively, uh, it could be expected that French English bilingual infants might be expected to follow the same strategy as adults would do. So basically they should be able to you know uh, make this distinction uh, as uh, you know as their monolingual English controls. Now for the experiment what they did do was they actually had a visual habi uh, fixation habituation procedure and uh, three groups of six uh, to eight month old uh, infants and uh, three groups of 10 to 12 month old infants were tested. Uh, during the habituation phase half of the participants, half of the infants were presented uh, uh, were the, uh, with the French the tokens and half of them were presented which were produced by French monolingual speakers and the other half were exposed to the repetitions of English the tokens which were produced by words excised uh, you know uh, uh, from uh, monolingual English speakers. So they were basically half of them were uh, uh, familiarized with the, half of them were familiarized with the. And again we are basically asking them to make the uh, same different decision. The results actually showed that since language specific perception has not really developed by around 6 to 8 months of age, infants from all three uh, groups, French uh, monolinguals, English monolinguals and French English bilinguals were capable to make this distinction between the French the and the English the sound. Interestingly, since language percep uh, specific perception has started to crystallize by the around 10 to 12 months of age, 
uh, English and French monolinguals actually showed very similar patterns and were not able to uh, perceive the difference. Again, something very interesting uh, uh, as uh, to you know what we saw in the previous study. Now, for the results of uh, bilinguals to be you know these uh, infant uh, simultaneous bilinguals 10 to 12 month olds, if only cross uh, language distributional overlap would determine the time course of phonetic development, these bilinguals should actually fail to uh, perceive the contrast uh, you know and they would basically be grouping the instances of French and English the and dirt together. On the contrary, if frequency really matters and because in English the is much more frequent than the, these people should follow the example of English adults and be able to uh, distinguish between the the and the the sounds. And indeed, this is what happened because uh, the uh, these uh, bilingual kids were actually able to detect the difference much like English monolingual infants and adults. So, we can see here that not only the statistical distribution, but also the frequency uh, you know uh, of use of these particular sounds in a given language and which basically would reflect in the input that they would have received actually also matters. So, uh, to conclude this, uh, the, uh, if you consider the joint results of both types of studies, uh, uh, you know, from sequential bilinguals to simultaneous bilinguals, you could, it, you could basically say that simultaneous bilinguals develop some contrast at the same pace and with the same trajectory as their monolingual peers, although the development of few other contrasts may be slightly delayed, okay, and may follow a different route. Further, both cross language distributional overlap as well as the frequency of occurrence of specific speech sounds in these different languages actually plays a very important role in how these individuals are going to acquire these speech sounds. All right. So, this is all about uh, you know how uh, in uh, you know uh, uh, these phonemic contrasts are acquired uh, in uh, sequential bilinguals and simultaneous bilinguals and what are the specific characteristics. In the next lecture, I am going to talk to you more about words and how things are sort of how children start uh, you know to segment the word tree. Thank you.